nothing like living a simple life. Something out those aches and pains from working on the farm. Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. Today we'll be doing a service, an annual service on this Kubota BX series. This is a 25, but it doesn't matter if it's an 18, 23, or 25. They're all going to be roughly the same. There might be some fluid capacity differences, but for the most part, these little three-cylinder diesel engines are all about the same. Now, not everything that I'm going to do today is necessary, but I like to keep my equipment in good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and at the 50 hour mark, I'm doing an oil change. I'm doing my air filters, my diesel fuel filters, and we're going to do some grease fittings and even replace the transmission filter and then top it off with new fluid. So I'm going to start this outside. I don't know if I'll do the whole job outside, but I have gone ahead. I'm going to start this engine up and warm it up. And while I'm warming it up, I'm going to get the tools needed to do the oil change. That's going to be a drain pan to catch my old oil. And I think it's a 14 millimeter wrench. So let's do it. Well, while the engine is warming up on the Kubota, well, let's take a look at what we're going to be doing here. We've got our air filter here. And then we've got a transmission filter, an oil filter, both fuel filters, some uh, transmission or hydraulic fluid to top things off, and some 1540 Rotella. Now, I, you can get any brand of this. I got 1540. I'd love to use synthetic, but it's awfully hard around here to find synthetic uh, 1540 oil. So we'll go ahead and get ready. Again, I, normally I would do this in the shop, but it is such a nice day. Hey, why not do it out in the yard? So let's do that. First thing we're going to do, drain the oil. Okay, just so I can get to everything I want to get to, I'm going to go ahead and remove some of these panels. Not all of this stuff needs to come off to do this job, but it's just easier, and it's going to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. <laughs> and there it is. If you never knew that your Kubota could do that, it can and uh it's really just these two screws here you got two here and, and one on the other side one and one that's all it is to it if you needed to do major work to this thing well this is the first step while i've got it apart i'm also going to pull out this and you can see these get dirty I'll go ahead and clean that out and we can slide that back in there Okay, oil filter located right here. Drain plug down at the bottom. Let me get my other camera. We'll get down the bottom and we'll get this draining out. Before I hit the drain though, I'm gonna unscrew the cap a little bit. And that's gonna allow the oil to drain out quicker. All right, here's our drain plug. What's that? Now, if you're used to draining the oil on a gasoline engine, the color of the diesel oil is going to probably scare you a little bit. It's totally okay, though. It is, um, it's just a product of diesel engines. They create a lot more soot. That soot gets into the oil, so you end up with very black oil very quickly. So I'll go ahead and let that drain. And while I'm letting it drain, it might be hard for you to see it. I'm going to replace, there's a metal copper washer or aluminum washer here. I'll go ahead and pry that off, find one in my collection that's the same size to replace it with. All right, once it's finished draining, I got my new washer. Put that on my plug. All right, and we'll reinsert that. There we go. I usually use a rag and wipe off this area. That way, when I run the car the first time or run the engine the first time, <clears throat> if I've got a leak, it'll be easier to detect. Great, let's go on up and take the filter off next. The filter is gonna make a mess coming off. It's gonna leak some oil down in this area here, but that's all right. We'll wipe up what we can. All right, the next step, get to that oil filter. We're gonna get our pan up under here. 
and that's going to catch most of it. It's going to drip down, and you can't really see it, but there is a hole in the frame there, so it will, most of it anyway, will go right down through. We'll go ahead and pull that off. Sometimes you can do it by hand. Yeah, this one's not too tight. go and it's big sure to check to make sure that the o-ring stays on the old oil filter if it sticks to that and you insert a new oil filter onto it you'll end up with a pretty massive leak very quickly and we don't want that all right let me go grab the new oil filter we'll screw that on and we're ready to move on to the air filters and fuel filters this job start to finish even with greasing any grease fittings on your accessories shouldn't take you but an hour all right I've got my new filter here and it is part number HH150 dash three two four three zero this fits like i said many 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 years makes and models so uh, chances are this is probably the one if you have a three cylinder kubota this is probably the one all right before i put this back on i am going to put just a little bit of oil and that's just so this thing doesn't start off running with basically an empty sump so i'm just going to fill it up just a little bit like so Then I'm going to use a little bit of that oil to lubricate the new O-ring. And that's it. We're ready to reinstall that. Some of that new oil is going to drip out. That's okay, too. There we go. Now, before we move on to the filters, let's go ahead and fill it back up. Like I said, the whole system here only holds a little less than three quarts total. I bought five quarts of 1540. I'm going to use a funnel so I don't make a horrible mess. I'm going to clean that funnel out because I can't remember what I used in it last time. There we go. Once we've got our three quarts back in, or 2.9, go ahead and put our cap back on. We'll move our pan out of the way. Wipe down any spillage. And it's time to fire this thing up and make sure that we got the level right. So let's do that now. Let it set for a second or two here. Let all that oil settle back down. And we can check our oil level to make sure that we got it just right. And it's a little hard to see probably on camera here, but there's the fill line. And it's just below that. I have no doubt that if the entire system settled out, it'd be perfect. Great. Okay, so when checking everything here, we're looking at hoses and we're looking at the intake box. We're looking at everything to see if there's chafing, if there's issues coming up or issues that we just haven't noticed. In this case, everything looks pretty good. But I do see, and it may be difficult for you to see in here, that this belt has excessive deflection. Deflection is the amount we can move up or down a belt when we have it on here, this V-belt style. And so what we want is about a half inch in either direction, a maximum of an inch of deflection. This one feels like an inch in each direction. So we're going to loosen up the adjuster bolt here. And we're going to loosen up the one below. Get to it easily. There we go. There we go, and you can see it move back. That's about a half inch deflection in either direction. So I'm happy with that. I'll go ahead and tighten that back up. And do the same on the bottom. Okay, beautiful. 
That's it on this side. Let's move to the other side. We'll do the air filter and the first of the two fuel filters. On this side, we also want to look and see if there's any kind of issues coming up, looking for leaks, these fuel lines, the injectors, the return lines. In this case, this thing is in great shape, so nothing to worry about there. Here is our air box. We're going to be releasing this clamp and this clamp and pulling out the air filter. Then we'll move down to here. This is our one of two fuel filters. This is our upper filter. This one here, we don't really have to do a whole lot to get it off. The lower one, we're going to have to pinch off some stuff. If you end up having a problem while doing this job, this is our bleeder screw in order to get the engine running again. So if you run into an airlock issue on these, there's where you're going to have your, there's where you're going to have your savior, your fix. All right, I'm going to remove this clamp. And there we go. And let's pull that out. We'll inspect the air hose for debris. It looks pretty good. And I'll get a rag and I'll wipe that out as well. Yeah, and that old filter there, that's only 50 hours on it, but it definitely is dirty. You can see a lot of crud built up in there. And that's because as well as using it as a tractor, I use it to mow. So that kicks up a lot of dust and debris. All right, there's our new filter. These only install one way. This goes back into here, kind of squishes down onto it. Part number on that filter, 1G6591. 11222 genuine part. I try to use genuine parts when working on these things. Um, for the cost of the unit, it just seems like it makes sense to use the best. With that on there, go ahead and reattach our two clips and we're ready to move on to the fuel filter. All right, once again, I'm going to get this pan underneath here so that when the fuel comes out of it, if any does, <clears throat> we don't uh, have a huge mess under here. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a pair of vice grips. I'm actually going to use two for the front one. And I'm going to pinch the line ever so lightly. I'm not going to go crazy. You can see I've got this big gap because I don't want to damage it. But I want to try to reduce fuel loss. So once I've got that, these clips here, these are just spring clips. Use a pair of pliers and wiggle them up. Same thing on the bottom. This one's rotated a little bit. slide that down. We have a 10 millimeter right here. I'll go ahead and take that out and we'll be replacing this in no time. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clamp off the other line here. We're just trying to do this because we're trying to minimize losses and reduce the opportunity for air to enter the system. A little more than that. Cool. So both sides are clamped. Go ahead and take our 10. I tell you, there's riding mowers out there that are more difficult to work on. This is actually a really um, well thought out design. The fuel filter part number is 12581-430012. There's two of them. One that's way down lower and one that's up here. We're doing this one first just because we got the hood off. There you go. That's a genuine part again. And we'll take our pliers. We're going to grab onto that hose, twist it a little bit. And it should pull off. There we go. When I get that off, go ahead and stick the new one on. We'll do the same thing on the bottom here. Except before we put that one on. We've got to transfer the clamp over. There we go. Now that they're both on, we can go ahead and reinstall the 10 mil. the smell of diesel fuel. I don't like the smell of gas. I guess I work on far less diesels than I do on gas engines, so maybe that's why. And then we'll move our clamps back down on here. it. Take any excess diesel fuel that's leaked and clean that up. 
And just like the other side, now is a great opportunity to take a look around while we have the cover off before we put the cover back on and see if there's any issues, leaks or problems on this side. And I don't see anything that concerns me. No leaks, the belt's been tightened up and the hoses all look tight. No chew marks from rodents, so I think we're in good shape here. Well, I won't show it, but I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the cover. And then we're gonna move this underneath and get to the last two pieces. That's our filter and that's all I'm gonna be able to show you, unfortunately. But I'll go ahead and do that as well. Same rules apply, we're gonna pinch off the fuel and that front one's even tougher because the shield here is in the way. But I'm going to do that one too. And uh, if you don't pinch these lines off here, you will get uh, drowned in diesel because the whole tank will empty right into it. Break that loose. If you're just buying a used Kubota, this filter's probably never been replaced and probably definitely needs to be replaced. More of the sediment ends up down here. So even though this one is probably the only part of this tractor that's difficult to service, it's very important that you replace this one. All right, once we've got that clamp out of there, well, you can remove... this clamp here over from one to the other and then we can reattach this and that's all there is to it all right so it's still pretty much impossible for you all to see this but there's our filter I, I got the oil pan out of the way just got to screw that back on but you can see our two clamps while I'm showing you inside the Deep dark secrets here. Um, let me show you that fan I was talking about. That uh, fan right there. That's a doozy, uh, but it can be done without taking everything apart like they want you to do. But it's a good time to check it anyway. In this case, I'm happy to see that 50 hours later it has not broken again. So that's a good sign. All right, let me go ahead and tighten this down and we'll be done with that part. And we'll move on to the transmission filter and fluid and we're out of here. Well, it's time to move on to the very last part of this job with the camera, and there it is. That is our hydraulic fluid filter, hydrostatic transmission fluid filter, whatever you want to call it. It's a filter, and the hydrostatic transmissions on these also act as a hydraulic pump. So uh, they get a lot of use and abuse. These can be a little bit tougher to take off. There's just not a lot of room to grab onto it, so I'm going to use a uh, clamp here. We'll get that off and replace that in a GIF. All right. That filter number is HHK20-36990. just barely enough room for it to clear and you can see that's nice and clean there you don't lose a lot of fluid but I do recommend um, getting yourself some UDT fluid and topping it off plus the front diff too I mean you just need to kind of top off all the fluids when you're doing this kind of a service Guess what? 
we're done underneath the vehicle. Beautiful. Let's go ahead, pull it out, top it off, and fire it up. All right, so I topped off just a little bit of hydraulic fluid into the transmission. The front was actually filled, so no need to do that. And if you can hear it, that's the fuel pump running. And what it's doing is, I'm going to leave that running for about 30 seconds. Actually, it already has been about 30 seconds. That is to pump that air back out of the lines, hopefully, and this thing should start up relatively quickly. Let's give it a shot. That's it. it. Even with filming and doing this in real time and getting the camera angles and getting the flashlight and everything like that, this still took less than an hour. Uh, parts wise, using genuine Kubota parts cost me about $66 in uh, filters and about another 30 to, well, no, actually, I guess it would be about another 50 in fluids. The oil being 20 bucks, but that UDT fluid, which I'll have for future top-offs, that costs about another 30. So we're looking at like $110, $120 with tax. Now, let's think about this. If I took this tractor down to the Kubota dealership, first of all, I gotta take my truck, I gotta hook up a dual axle trailer, I've gotta load this thing up, I've gotta drive it down there, I've gotta unload it, and I've gotta go several days or possibly weeks this time of year without my tractor. That is not really worthwhile then add to that fact that they will probably charge you about four to four hundred and fifty dollars to do the same work we just did here for 120 and if you are following the math that i'm following now it seems like it makes a whole lot more sense to go ahead and do it yourself clearly i didn't need any special tools to do this job i did it in a gravel driveway with just a couple of wrenches a pair of pliers and um, well some effort i guess that'll do it for today if you want to see more videos on maintenance and repair and use of the kubota bx it's kind of gone underused on the channel like I use it every day but I never really film what I'm doing with it I tend to focus more on garden tractors and riding mowers but I'd be happy to do so let me know in the comments below and until next time my friends you take care